Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Rule the Waves 2. This is episode number 21 in a succession Let's Play series that I'm conducting with Benjamin Magnus, XTRG, and Tortuga Power. We are playing as the Russian Empire. We've started the game of Rule the Waves 2 in the year 1900, or all the way to the year 1920. We're in, I think, our third or fourth war against the German Empire. None of the wars have yet yielded any real uh, success or any real... Uh, territorial acquisitions, but we've just won a massive victory against the Germans in the North Sea, and we're hoping that perhaps we can turn that uh, success into uh, some territorial acquisitions from the Germans if we're able to win this war. Uh, with that being said, in this episode we're going to continue the war, but we're also going to design a new class of super battleships uh, that we think can take advantage of the newly designed 16-inch quality zero guns uh, to help move the fleet forward to a more advanced design. Uh, with that being said, this was taken from a live stream of mine from a couple of days ago, so I'm just going to go ahead and stop talking here, and I'll turn it over to the live stream, picking things up in progress, just after the miracle in the North Sea, as we're calling it. Um, I do think we should design a new battleship. So the Tortukov class was nice when it was made, but it is not aging very well at only 19 knots. I don't want to send it into refit because, one, it's probably not cost-effective, and two, we need them in the current war we're fighting. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to design a new ship. We're going to design a Dreadnought battleship, and we're going to see what we can build. We, wow, so the auto designer wants us to build a ship with 10 14-inch guns. I think we get rid of the aft center line. Uh, update ship graphic. I think we make it its maximum size. We're going to make this damn thing huge. Because Russia can't really afford a large number of ships. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to... We also have 16-inch guns of caliber zero. So this is going to be a super dreadnought here. 16-inch guns of quality zero, which is pretty freaking phenomenal. 16-inch guns with increased elevation. We'll have 6-inch secondaries in double turrets. I want to have 20 of the things. So we'll have five doubles on each side. Uh, actually, we still have penalties on double turrets. So maybe we do... 18 single turrets. Our 6-inch guns have a quality of, of plus 1. Rate of fire for secondary guns reduced 20% due to accurate training. I thought we had developed a technology that allowed us to have turrets on secondaries. Huh. Interesting. It doesn't look like it wants to. Maybe that was just for cruisers. I'm not sure. Well, three fire control spots will have... Yeah, I want to make basically a super dreadnought. I don't need it to be 27 knots. That's too fast. That's even faster than our battle cruisers. So we're going to drop it to 25 knots. I think that makes for a better balance. With that extra weight, I'm going to go ahead and up the armor scheme. So we'll do 13 inches maybe on the belt. Our deck is 3.5, which I think is good enough. If we look at the gun data here, 3.5 inches of, of deck armor protects us out to about 20,000 yards from plunging fire. 28,000, like, I don't know. This just seems unlikely for us to have to worry about that. Now, what if we had, like, 12-inch guns? which it seems like a lot of the enemy ships... Yeah, 12-inch guns can, can't even penetrate 3.5 inches at any range. 13-inch guns can't penetrate at any range. 14-inch guns, and I'm looking at the deck armor, can't penetrate at any range. 50, oh, of negative 1 quality, as a reminder, because we, we don't have quality 0. 15-inch guns can penetrate 3.5 inches of deck armor at 21,000. And then obviously 16 inches can as well. What if we do four and a half? I mean, that's going to put us over the weight. But but just for shits and giggles, four and a half gets us out to 23,000 yards. Four and a half is a lot of deck armor. 15, 15, 5, 4. I'm just trying to see here like what I can... Okay. 
Okay. I'm just trying to think here. Do we need, we're doing fuel oil. We're going to do medium range. That's way too much deck. We don't need, we'll do four inches of deck. Four inches of deck, four and a half of turret top. 14 on the conning, 14 on the turrets. And that gets us back to, to where we need to be. If we increase it to 25, I think 24 knots is good enough. 24 knots is faster than any of the Imperator Magnus classes. It's almost as fast as the battle cruisers, not quite, but the battle cruisers still will act as scouts. It's going to be faster than probably any other battleships in this era. We could even drop the deck. Can you manually type in a number? No. Oh, belt extended is, is zero? Why is it zero? Is this like an all or nothing scheme? I don't know if I need belt extended. Obviously, if we, we add that, it's going to add a lot of weight. Do we need belt extended? Is that important? Leave it at zero. The gamer off class. I mean, I could... I don't know. What's the... So I guess A&O... It, it must be A&O, right? That's, it says A&O. I don't know what the difference is between slope deck... Yeah, flat deck on top. So it is A&O. A-O-N. So that means it is an all-or-nothing scheme. Which is why there's no extended deck or belt. I mean, it would... It doesn't give me a penalty here, so I'm assuming it's it's researched. Okay, so we could do 24 knots, 13-inch belt, 4-inch deck, 14 inches on the turrets and conning tower, 4.5 on the turret top, 4 on the secondaries, 16-inch guns in 4 double turrets. Would it be better to do 3 triples instead? I wonder how the weight works. So if we do 1 triple in the front and aft, and then... We get rid of the the forward or the aft superimposed. Is that better? Actually, the weight's worse. That's interesting. So a triple turret is heavier. Than a, so three triple turrets are heavier than four double turrets. Okay. I guess that would also be one more gun, which is probably where the weight comes from. All right, so I think that's probably good. I think I have a little bit of weight to spare. I don't even know if we need these tertiary guns. I just don't like the idea of all six-inch guns because I don't know if they can fire fast enough, like realistically. So if we did three, two, three, that would save a bunch of weight, would it? Looks like it would. We'd still have a total of eight guns. Three would be firing toward the rear, five in the front. So this is kind of the reverse of the Isterichi Gamer class from a turret layout. And then it still gives us quite a bit of weight savings. We can actually make 28, 20, uh, I can't do that. So I guess we'll do, so we're going to do three four-inch guns on each side of the ship in singles. Then we'll do 16 six-inch guns in singles. We'll do eight 
16 inch guns, a triple in front and back, and then a superimposed double in front. We'll have 25 knots on the ship. I know the tertiary guns may not be super effective, but I like the idea of something a little bit more rapid fire to deal with destroyers that might be coming in to help complement the six inchers. So I know it's not much, right? Three, four inchers on a broadside is not going to add a ton of firepower, but I do think it adds a little bit more speed uh, to barrage the enemy under. Meanwhile, we don't have anything better than torpedo defense number one, so that's what we're going to set it to. Does anybody know how you bulge a hull? Someone was saying something about bulging the hull to make it better against torpedoes, but I don't actually know how you do that, or even if you can do that. Uh, apparently, we have torpedo tubes on this thing, which feels like a little bit of a waste. Um, you have to add bulges in a refit? Okay. Do we? Is there any reason to have bulges on this? Or sorry, not bulge. Um, do we have any reason to have torpedoes on this thing? It feels like we're wasting 46 tons. I kind of don't really see the point. I mean, J Street, I would still say a 25-knot battleship in 1920 is a pretty fast battleship. All right, so let's... Maybe we drop the torpedoes. Whoops. Use that weight saved to up it to 10 4-inch guns. I'm not going to put torpedoes on just for... I'm not going to add torpedoes on just for extra speed. Or just for reconnaissance. I know that's probably something that's useful, but that feels a little gamey. It's going to be oil fired, engine priority normal. We could probably add more armor, but I actually like this setup. So this is going to be the, the ship. Um, we're going to name it. I don't know what we're going to name it. Um, hmm. Brakov. Uh, should we call it the Lenin class? <laughs> it's a little bit too early for that. Um, sure, why not? Oh, I want something with my name in it, just because of my vanity. We'll just call it the THG class. I know that's not super Russian, but... Okay, so the design study is going to take four months. We've got over $128 million in the bank. That should help. I'd like to build four of these things, but I also don't want to leave my successor in total bankruptcy. Um, so that's what it's going to be named for now anyway. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to move forward to the next turn. The Army wants more resources to prepare for an offensive that will shift the strategic initiative. The Tsar is asking for your opinion. Only the Navy can win. The Navy can get by for a lot. Okay. Yes. Army better deliver a victory. Meanwhile, shipboard air, aircraft operation. We have researched uh, a CVL so we can now develop light carriers uh, in our fleet. Food is becoming scarce in Germany due to submarine sinkings of merchant ships. We sank another 25 ships, 26 with our other merchants. The enemy's commissioned two more subs, but they have not sunk anybody. They must be using pretty restricted submarine warfare rules. Meanwhile, trade disruption from raider and submarine sinkers are causing hardship and food shortages in Germany. The operations of our ally adds 190 victory points. A fleet battle in the Baltic. Let's do it. Uh, it sounds interesting, man with Texas. Or man from Texas. It sounds like a pretty cool idea. All right, so we have, I think, the entire Russian fleet. Sea State is limiting operations and air operations, so we've obviously got bad weather. Uh, I have no desire to command any of my light cruisers. I'm just going to set that to AI. 
We'll set these guys to screen. These guys are already set to screen. We've got the three remaining Isterichi Gamer class battle cruisers all ready and in action. All of them are at 100% uh, readiness. Uh, I would think all of the destroyers should always be in a screening mode, not a supporting role, but that's just me. So we've got our three battle cruisers up front. We have. Holy cow. AI controlled. Alright, I'm just gonna... I, I like to try and minimize how many units I actually command in a battle. So I'd like to just try and keep it to one formation that's going to sort of be the flagship of my formation. We'll go with slow speed. Alright, so unknown ship spotted. Meanwhile, these ships are going to increase speed to 19 knots. They're going to head south. The enemy ships are spotted where? An unknown ship is spotted over here. This is just asking for torpedo trouble if we're really in a drizzle where we don't have great visibility. So, I don't think that... Is that really a battle cruiser out front? Do we run into that... The, do we somehow cut the entire enemy front of their entire formation? Oh, visibility must be really bad. They're going to need to get speed up. Good thing they've got the... Uh, the five turrets on their rear. Let's run away. I crossed the T without even trying. I was hoping they would chase me. It didn't seem to. So we're going to turn right back into them. Fire at the bastards. Alright, so we get at least one hit on the enemy. We're making 26 knots. I am maneuvering as well. Enemy destroyers are all over this battlefield. Several hits into the Durflinger. Most of the enemy destroyers are on the other side of the battle cruiser. Meanwhile, scoring a number of hits on the Derflinger. If we can get a quick decapitation strike on the enemy battle cruiser, that would be great. As we've got three battle cruisers running. Boom! There she goes! Flash fire turret. Ship blown up. Was that. Wait, was that two Derflingers that just blew up or just the one? I'm confused. Did he have two flash fires? How did that happen? Anyway, let's have the battle cruiser sail back north. Yeah, the German ships might have been built by the by the British, perhaps. All right, we're gonna have the battle cruisers fall back to rejoin the fleet. Meanwhile, torpedoes in the water all over here. We're identifying more enemy ships. It looks like the range, the sighting range has expanded out to 12,000 yards. It was at 10,000 a little while ago, so the drizzle has stopped, and we're in low cloud now. Our battle cruisers are continuing to sail in front of the enemy formation. Our destroyers are, like, up there in the thick of things. Battle cruisers are sailing across the front of the enemy line. An enemy battleship is hit by a torpedo. Hell yeah! Good job, DD, even if you die. Alright, so our battle cruisers. We'll sail south now. Our battle fleet is coming up somewhat slowly and sluggishly. Vestfallen class battleship here is kind of sailing off on its own. This is just a, a, a furball of a mess of a battle. I'm 
Might we break the blockade if we can win decisively here? Visibility is up to 17,000 yards. We're kind of sailing. The enemy has no real discernible formation. Meanwhile, our ships are all kind of like in three lines. You got to imagine if, if this takes into like sighting and all that, that this would not, you know, lines of sight, that our, our front rank of battle cruisers would probably be getting in the way of our, our second rank in terms of firing accurately. Continuing to score f hits on the Vest Fallen. Enemy destroyers in the front here look like they're dead in the water. I would not cry if the enemy lost a few destroyers. I know I'm probably too close into those destroyers, but my hope is if they're dead in the water, they're not launching torpedoes. Sure, pick up survivors from the Derflinger. I can't imagine there's there's very many survivors from a, a, a ship that had its magazine blow up. The Poltava, Imperator Magnus, Tasarovich. I'm going to turn my ships away, those enemy destroyers. Fuck, I literally hit turn away because I saw those destroyers coming in. And as soon as I hit turn, we get hit by a torpedo. Where's the rest of my, sh my fleet? Why are these ships under AI control? It doesn't even let me change them back to human control. That's weird. How bad is that hit? The Asturici suffered a torpedo hit, but it doesn't look like the flotation damage is actually all that bad. Meanwhile, the Hirschshaft. One of our destroyers founders due to heavy seas. Hirschshaft is out there. Pretty beat up. It's hard to tell what's going on. So that enemy destroyer was sunk. Meanwhile, the other battleships are coming up behind us. More shells going in. There's the Schleswig Holstein. Got a hit there. The Navarin, meanwhile, is sailing out much faster than the other battle cruisers here. Just neither of those ships has suffered much damage. The Navarin suffered quite a bit of structure damage, but very little flotation damage. Another destroyer, Founders, due to heavy seas. Submerged torpedo tube hit on the Navarin. That can't be good. Meanwhile, I don't think I can actually command... Oh, wait, I can. Yeah, okay. So I don't want you anywhere over here. What are you doing over there, Imperator Magnus? Do you have a death witch? wish? Get out of there. Sail north. You're charging the enemy battle line all by yourself with your whole two 14-inch guns or whatever they are. Honestly, if the battle ended now, I'd be I'd be content. Maybe I should pull out. I think this would be a moderate victory. We did sink an enemy battleship, but we've suffered quite a bit of damage ourselves. A number of destroyers and other ships sunk. I think we're going to head for the port of Libau. What are these guys doing over here? The Tortukov class, meanwhile, sailing straight ahead into enemy l lines of battle. I'm ordering it away.
Oh boy. I mean, I wouldn't. Let's see how the how are these guys doing damage wise anyway. Almost no damage. No damage. No damage. All right. Well, the Tortukov class is actually doing pretty well. They're just so damn slow that if they get into trouble, there's really no way to pull back. Alright, so the visibility is dropping now back down to 10,000 yards. Looks like the enemy may be pulling back. I'd gladly sink an enemy light cruiser, though. Anything we can do to, like, Score a few more points. God damn it. Where is that ship? The rear one in the column? Where is the torpedo even fired from? Hopefully you can make it to Labau. You're at 51% damage. Half flotation damage, it looks like. I don't even know where that torpedo came from. I guess we can't really see everything in this weather either. Yes, I understand that suffered more than 50% flotation damage. What size ship is this? This is one of the Tortukovs. Enemies sailing right into our battle line. Be real great if our destroyers could fire some torpedoes that hit the enemy battleships. Meanwhile, apparently a Nassau battleship is trying to head off the Petroplask, or however you pronounce that battleship's name. One of their battleships is charging straight into our formation. I've seen torpedoes fly right by it. The Isterichi, meanwhile, can't keep up, can't get more than 16 knots due to damage she suffered. The enemy battleship that's charging into our formation there just took a torpedo. The Nassau that we're sailing by is over here. That guy's just charging straight through our formation. Nassau is hit by... Its turret blows up. Nice! That's two enemy battleships blown up by turrets exploding. The Hirchhoff just took another torpedo. That might be three enemy, tor enemy battleships sunk here. <laughs> they must be undercover British ships. Perhaps. Remember, we've suffered a fair amount of damage ourselves, too. We also have much heavier shells than the enemy, as a reminder. The enemy, I think their ships are mostly 12 and 13 inch guns, whereas we have 13, 14, and 15 inch guns. So even if they've got adequate armor to go against a 12 inch artillery piece on a, on a, on a battleship, that's not scaled to a 15 inch shell, which can definitely penetrate similar armor that a 12 inch shell would stop. We're slowly working our way toward Labau. The goal of the fleet is to get to Labau. Hopefully none of our ships are sunk. We're still engaging with the enemy somewhere. Petroplask is limiting flooding. I don't know where these ships are located. I don't see anything back here. Well, there's, there's ships behind us. Perhaps chasing us. Petroplask is limiting flooding. 
Meanwhile, our destroyers are turning back there. Petrovsk is now shipping water due to heavy seas. Where is she, anyway? She's way back here. We're closing in on the port, though. She's only moving at 10 knots. Our destroyers back here are trying to screen and sweep in behind to protect her. She's the only one in immediate danger of sinking. Our destroyers may sacrifice themselves to try and save her. We will see. <laughs> Your Basset Hound is chasing squirrels in the middle of the night? No, we lost the Petroposk. So close to getting out to out to port, out to out of the war. So we did lose one of the. I think that was one of the Tortukovs, but we did sink three enemy battleships. So as long as we don't lose anything else in the rush for port, I think that's still a pretty clear victory. So everybody, get into port here to end this battle. Eight airships are approaching enemy ships. Our airships? Where are the enemy ships that we're approaching? We got an airship over there. I don't know. No bomb hits. No bomb hits. Is there any way the ship can still not sink? Like, if it makes it to port in time? Oh no, the Petroposk already sank back there. Alright, so it looks like we'll lose one battleship to the enemy... Three, I think? Major Russian victory. So we did lose one battleship sunk and two destroyers sunk. They lost two battleships and a battle cruiser sunk. As well as a destroyer. So it's still a major victory for us. 30,000 to 10,000 in terms of the score. Or sorry, 300,000 to 109,000 in terms of the score. Three to one odds. That should actually bring our capital ships into parity with them. So Russian major victory gained two more prestige. 17,575 victory points to the enemy. 6,620. Our unrest level has dropped one more down to five. We'll just call it the Battle of Gotland. And if we look at the Almanac here, we can see that the Russian Navy has seven battleships in service. The enemy has eight. We have three battle cruisers, however, in service. The enemy has one. They are building two battleships and two battle cruisers. So depending on when those come in line, they may refresh their losses quite a bit. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, that really is, is bringing things much closer to parity. I probably should build a light cruiser but or a light carrier now that we have that ability. But I will, I'm probably going to wait a little bit more until I can lay down some of those new battleships. Meanwhile, that's a very successful battle again. I think so far in today's video, we've sunk, what, six enemy battleships to one loss of our own? Hey, Marty. Well, thanks for stopping by, and uh, have a good day tomorrow. Okay. All right, so another huge victory for us. We'll probably wrap this stream up here in just a minute. The enemy has sounded us out about a negotiated peace with us gaining disputed border areas and some of their colonies. The Tsar wants to know our opinion. We can secure even better terms if we crush them completely. A few more months will do it. Oh, well, they didn't accept my... I wanted larger terms. But in any event, a peace is concluded with our side gaining large territories and considerable war reparations. So we have six allowed points that we can take from them, which means, what can we take? Do we want African colonies? <laughs> I don't really. Uh, I would like Kitsau Bay in China. I think that fits well with Port Arthur. That'll be on just the opposite side of the, um, just on the opposite side of the bay. So definitely want Kitsau Bay. Um... I have no real desire for the Bismarck Archipelago, Samoa, the Marshall Islands. Uh, 
I guess we'll get the two free territories because that doesn't cost anything. Do we want African colonies? Does Russia have any desire for taking parts of Africa? I doubt it. Um... I guess, uh, if I need to move ships from Europe to Asia, then they might be worth it. That's actually a good point. Having friendly ports along the way to, uh, to, uh, Asia might actually be helpful. So I do think we'll take, in that case, we'll take, I don't even know how to pronounce this. Is this German East Africa, West Africa, whatever it is. I think we'll take Cameroon because I know that's on the west coast. And then we'll leave the remaining two points un untaken. I think we get a little bit more money if we don't take all of the value. Like we get an, a boost to our base resources. So we'll take these colonies and then we'll also go for the base resource boost. So there you have it. In peacetime agreement, the following possessions are ceded to Japan from Germany. Oh, so Japan got the other colony over here in eastern Africa. Okay. Interesting. So Japan gets some of the possessions as well. In the aftermath of war, the naval budget is considerably reduced. Oh boy. So now that I'm trying to build new battleships, I have no money to build them, right? The design study will be ready in two months. We do have a lot of money in the bank. But I don't know how I'm going to build anything. Do I have the ships to be on station and the range to get there? I don't think I need anything on station at the moment. We did take Cameroon here in Western Africa. So theoretically, that would allow us to get to Asia more easily. We already took Hanan previously. We took Kitsau Bay, which allows us to have Kitsau and the Laotong Peninsula. That definitely fits Russian strategic interests. And then we took the Northern Marianas and we took the Caroline Islands from the Germans as well. We didn't take the Marshall Islands or Samoa or the Bismarck Archipelago, um, but that's fine. They don't really contribute much in resources. And the German uh, naval budget or the, the German economy is probably in pretty bad shape following that war. I think we'll have to leave the post-war economy for another time. Um, I'm building the four heavy cruisers. We've got the three battle cruisers. The Imperator Magnuses, we might convert to light carriers. I'm not sure. I might also scrap them. Uh, we did lose one of the Tortukovs, uh, and we also lost... Uh, actually, that's the only one we lost today. In this war, though, we lost two battle cruisers and a battleship. Um, so from a financial perspective, uh, we're not... We've got, we've got work to do. Unrest is down to three, and our prestige is at 52. So overall, a really good end to the war. And now we just have to figure out what we're going to do with our next class of ships, with CL, CVLs, and all of the like. But we'll start to figure that stuff out in our next episode. And until our next episode, this is the Historical Gamer, as always, saying thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm out.